now we are going to the last topic of module 1 that is driver information acquisition and processing. So, all of you know the driving is a complex task which deals with physical demand and cognitive demand. If you look at the various scenario where driver has to take decision within fraction of second, 0 0.5 to 1 second is required for viewing analog speedometer. Typically, 2 or 4 glances are required and each of 1 second duration while they are operating different types of controls, mean little bit complex task where they are operating radio button or uh, climate control, mean AC control. For that purpose, they at least require 2 to 4 glances and each of the glance require 1 second. On the other hand, if you look at for viewing side view mirror, left side or right side view mirror, then it is taking 0.8 to 2 second. So, while driver is doing this type of in vehicle activities, then his primary attention from the road it is shifted to inside the vehicle. Then what is happening? If we consider that vehicle speed is 100 km per hour, so within this 1 or 2 second time, in 1 second time, the vehicle travel 28 meter and within this distance, driver is actually not looking at the road, he is looking inside the vehicle for performing different types of operation. So, what happens when drivers are doing this type of complex decision making task and followed by that selecting a particular response and executing that response, then various informations they receive, they process and they execute. Now, why this information is required? Different types of information is very important for driver safe and effective navigation. One hand it is important that the various information is required for driving, on the other hand if information overloading is there, there is also different types of driver errors happens. The information may have negative impact on drivers such as annoyance, fatigue, interference or masking of other useful information. There is also mental fatigue due to cognitive overloading and which leads to delayed decision making and response execution. Distracted driving also leads to accident. If we look at this report by Ministry of Road and Transport and Highways in 2016, so according to their accident report, in 2016, 4976 road accident happened, out of that 2138 death occurred and 4746 people injured. Why all these accidents happened? Only due to the driver's distracted behavior while they were talking over mobile phones. So, from that it is very clear that while drivers are distracted or performing different types of activity mean while they are not concentrating on their primary task that is the navigating the vehicle and based on the information received from the road, then this type of accidents may happen. Drivers receives information through various sensory channels mean various sense organ like eye, ear, skin, nose, various types of muscles, different types of uh, receptors are there, proprioceptive receptors are there through that they are receiving various information. What type of information they are receiving? They are receiving visual information for example, road signages, auditory information from horn of other vehicles, tactile information e.g. for example, texture of button switches, olfactory information, smell of fuel or leather from the seat cover. Similarly, there is kinesthetic information for example, sense of posture, movements of whole body or body parts. So, this type of different like visual information, auditory information, tactile information, olfactory information as well as kinesthetic information, all this type of information is being received by the driver while they are driving and this information received by various sense organ like eye, in eye there is rod and cone cells, these are the receptor cells those are activated and then the electrical signal is reaching to the brain. Similarly, in ear there is cochlea, in cochlea there is hair cells. So, hair cells are activated and it sends the signal. If we consider the skin, there are various cutaneous receptors, for example, Pacinian's corpuscles, Meissner corpuscles, those receptor cells are getting activated and they are sending the signal to brain. Similarly, for nose there is olfactory bulb inside that olfactory bulb there are olfactory receptor cells. While those due to various types of smell that is coming to nose and 
it is activating olfactory receptor cells, then signal is reaching to brain. Various kinesthetic information as I mentioned earlier, senses of posture, movements of whole body parts or individual body part, then those information is actually perceived by various types of receptors located in muscles, located in vestibular organ of inner ear. So, there are proprioceptive receptors in muscles as in case of vestibular apparatus, there are hair cells. So, these receptor cells while activated, they send signals to brain and then brain interpret the signals to take the decision. So, driver receives so many information from various sensory channels and those information while reach to driver's brain, they get the perception about the stimuli and then further process for decision making. Now, we are moving to human information processing model. In human information processing model, there are various aspects of human brain and various types of processors. So, there is perceptual processor, you can see at the bottom it is written half time of the memory mean every after a certain time the memory decay to its half of the original amount. Capacity CAP cap, this cap is for capacity and T for average processing time. Now, while if you look at the while diverts receiving some visual information or auditory information, it is going to perceptual processor. In perceptual processor, the time average time is 100 millisecond for the processing. Now, that information goes to the working memory and it stores as visual information or auditory information. Half time of visual information is 200 millisecond and its capacity 17 liters and mode physical. Similarly, in case of auditory, the half time is 1500 millisecond. So, while from the perceptual processors, these visual and auditory informations or any other information reaching to brain and it is stored in working memory. So, average half time of working memory is 7 seconds and its capacity 3 to 9 chunks of information and mode acoustic or visual mainly. So, now that information further if from the working memory it may reach to long term memory and in long term memory the half time is infinite. I mean once it is stored in long term memory it is stored there permanently and its capacity is infinite and the memory is stored as the, the information is stored as semantic memory. Now, from the working memory the information comes to cognitive processor and cognitive processor with the help of working memory ultimately guide motor processor and motor processor execute the motor response. Now, to understand this human information process model, we need to understand individual components. So, for individual components we will discuss in detail. So, first one is the sensation. So, what is sensation? Sensation can be defined as a physical trait that captures sensory information from the environment or our ambient surroundings and that information, whatever information or sensory information we are perceiving from the environment, our sense organ where there is neuronal receptor cells which acts as the biological trans transducer, it converts to the electrical signal. So, in brief what is sensation? So, sensation is the process by which our various biological transducer that is the receptor convert the physical stimuli to electrical signals and that electrical signals further uh, travels towards the brain through the neurons or nerve fibers. Now, next is perception. What is perception? Perception is the interaction of stimuli from surrounding environment in order to make the sense of the world. Thus, perceptual organization is the process by which human can apprehend particular relationship among potentially separate stimulus. So, while through the sensation information is reaching to brain and in brain there is perceptual processors and that processor helps in, in discriminating what type of information, how is its intensity and how its magnitude. So, that type of information we perceive. Now, various types of perception, there is visual perception, here are some examples, color perception of the product, form perception of product, size and depth perception. So, these are the various types of visual perception. Similarly, there is also auditory perception, while the information from the hair cells of the ear that uh, electrical signals is reaching to brain, then in brain there is auditory perception related to pitch perception, loudness perception, sound localization, location and direction of the sound source. So, this type of various perception 
is uh, I mean perceived in our brain. There is smell perception, noxious smells of ammonia, sweet smell of fragrance. So, this type of information is also, also reaching to our brain. Touch perception. So, as we discussed earlier, there is skin where there is cutaneous receptors. Those receptors actually convert the stimulus which we had earlier mentioned as the sensation and that sensation as electrical signal reaching to our brain where we are getting the touch perception. We are getting the information related to softness of the seat cover or smoothness or roughness of the product surface. So, this type of information we perceive. There is also kinesthetic perception. For example, vibration frequency, amplitude, duration, direction, etcetera. Body balance, special orientation of different body parts that information is perceived by actually sensed by our kinesthetic sensors and ultimately it reach to brain for kinesthetic perception. Now, next topic is cognition. Cognition can be defined as the mental process which takes place between sensation that is the first step, then perception and finally, response selection. So, cognition is the process which actually happening or taking place between these activities in sensation, perception and response. It is the mental process underlying our ability to perceive the world, remember, talk about and learn from our experiences and modify our behavior accordingly. So, while one st any stimulus coming to our sensory organ and sensation happening as a neuronal signal, it, it is reaching to perceptual processor. From the perceptual processor, it is going to cognitive processor and from cognitive processor, it is reaching to motor processor and finally, motor processor is executing the motor response while there is various types of neuromuscular function. So, mainly there are three types of processor, perceptual processor, cognitive processor and the motor processor. This cognitive processor actually making the decision based on the working memory and working memory again taking the help of long term memory. Now, for understanding the relationship between sensation, perception, cognition and motor response, we also need to understand attention. What is attention? Attention is the ability to allocate cognitive resources, uh, cognitive processing resources towards information or stimuli coming from the environment. So, this is the allocation of cognitive processing resources, mean how much cognitive resources we can allocate for a particular task. Attention is considered as the crucial step for cognitive process for perception, cognition, decision making and execution of the response. So, there are four types of attention, I mean we can categorize attention into four categories. First one focused or sustained attention, second selective attention, next alternating attention and the last one is the divided or distributed attention. Now, we will discuss each of these category one by one. So, if we take the vehicle example where driver is driving a vehicle, that time how the driver is allocating different types of cognitive resources for decision making. So, in that case, the he has different types of attention. Focused or sustained attention, in this type of attention is the we can define as the ability to respond discreetly to specific stimulus or task for certain amount of time without distraction. In case of driving, we can take the example that while driver is driving and he is, his primary focus on the visuals of the road. While visual information is coming from the road and driver is focusing his attention on the road and based on that visual information he is driving. So, this type of attention allocation we call focused attention. There is another type of attention that is selective attention where focusing on a specific stimuli by filtering others, inhibiting interference or disturbing stimuli and suppress inappropriate response. So, in case of selective attention, driver actually selectively attending some stimulus where he is suppressing or not attending other sort of stimulus coming from the environment. For example, while driver is driving, his primary or focused attention is on the road, at the same time he is selectively attending other visual information for example, road signage or he is searching a particular shop on road side. So, his attention selectively going to that direction. Alternating attention, rapid shifting of attention back and forth 
between stimuli tasks that require different cognitive demand. In this case, there is rapid shifting. So, driver say for example, there is another co-passenger, he is talking with the driver. So, driver performing both the task, he is talking with the co-passenger at the same time, he is looking at the road in front for driving. So, he is rapidly shifting his attention between these two tasks. So, this is an example of alternating attention. There is another sort of attention that is divided or distributed attention. Driver is performing two or more tasks simultaneously. Those tasks or stimuli may be of similar nature or may be of different nature. For example, driver is talking with a co-passenger at the same time he is controlling different of controls and at the same time perceiving or receiving information from the road. So, for a particular time he is distributing his attention in so many activities. So, this type of attention distribution is called distributed attention. Now, for understanding the human information processing, we should also know about the memory. Memory, how we can define memory? Memory is the ability of human brain to register and retain or store the information as mental impression and retrieval of stored information whenever it is required. So, not only storing, but at the same time retrieval of that information. According to Olson, 1985, memory does not act as a unitary whole, rather it is a series of three separate entities. So, first one sensory registered, second short term memory and third one is the long term memory. So, these are the main three categories of memory. Now, from this schematic diagram you can see based on the function memory can be divided into three part. One is registering information, generally we call it sensory register or sensory memory. The second is the storing of information where there is short term storage or short term memory and a long term memory. And there is also another function of brain that is another function related to memory that is the retrieving of information. Now, in storing information as you mentioned short term memory is there as well as long term memory. Short term memory then act as the central executive for making the decision obviously with the help of long term memory and long term memory can be further divided into semantic and episodic memory. Now, we want to discuss about sensory memory. So, sensory memory allows human being to retain impression of sensory information after original stimuli is withdrawn. Sensory stimuli serve as momentary collection of sensory input and its duration is just enough to be transferred to short term memory. It has been reported that temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex is associated with this sensory memory. So, sensory memory it has huge capacity, but its duration is very short. It is this time is just enough for converting that information from sensory memory to short term memory if it is required. Otherwise, it will be decayed or it will be destroyed. There will be no storage of sensory memory. The sensed information is stored for a very short time after which it must enter to the working memory or it will be decayed. Sensory memory subsystem and its information retention capability also varies based on the which type of information. If it is visual information, it is stored as iconic memory and its duration is 0.5 to 1 second after that it decayed. On the other hand, auditory memory which is auditory information which is stored as the echoic memory, its duration is 3 to 5 second. Now, short term memory is poor for keeping large track of information and it is more fragile, volatile than the long term memory. Individual can control short term memory and can maintain information by grouping information, making items distinctive and by rehearsaling. The information from the sensory memory is transferred to the short term memory. This memory is very crucial for working on the long term memory. As the information generally cannot be placed in the long term memory or retrieved directly from the long term memory without passing through the short term memory. So, short term memory actually work as the gateway. From long term memory, the information comes to short term memory, then it helps in decision making. On the other hand, while some information is coming from the sensory organs and it is reaching to brain, so first it is reach, reach to from sensory memory to short term memory and from short term memory to long term memory. Working memory has a limited capacity. So, generally 5 to 9 chunks of information and very short duration of approximately 30 seconds. Limitation of the working memory are very crucial 
for any human machine interface design. If the working memory is overloaded, there will be probability of more mistakes or errors. So, in comparison to short term memory, long term memory is generally stored the information in semantic and episodic format. Long term memory has large capacity and it is virtually permanent. It means usually it is stored throughout the entire lifespan of an individual. Human gains control over long term memory by encoding information into rich meanings and linking or associating items together by being clever it finding items that appear to be lost. So, they can also find out the information which stored in the brain by some tricks or by associating or linking with other items stored in the brain. Now, after discussing these three types of memory sensory register, short term memory and long term memory, if we summarize that what are the differences of these three types of memory based on various features as it is mentioned on the left side panel that what it takes to get information in, how information is maintained. So, first point what it takes to get information in, attended or unattended stimulus that is actually may be sensed by the sense organ and it is reaching to sensory register or our sensory uh, memory. In case of short term memory, it requires attention and cognition to uh, save that memory. Long term memory, repetition, rehearsal or coding is required to convert the short term memory to long term memory. How information is maintained in this type in various types of memories? So, in case of sensor memory, information cannot be maintained. In case of short term memory, it is possible for that purpose continuous rehearsal or attention is required. In case of long term memory, generally no effort or capacity is required for this purpose. Then how long this information lasts in that brain? In case of sensory register, it is 0.25 second to 2 second. In case of short term memory, it is up to 30 second that short term memory stays and in case of long term memory, it is lifetime, it is from minutes to years. What is the format of the information which is stored in uh, sensory memory or short term memory or long term memory? So, in case of sensory memory, the information is stored as the literal copy of the input, either visual or auditory or any other tactile information. In case of short term memory, it is stored as visuospatial and phonological information. In case of long term memory, semantic episodic that may be auditory and visual or in abstract format it is stored. In terms of capacity, sensory register has high capability, it can store huge information, but in case of short term memory, it is very small only 7 plus minus 2 chunks of information. In case of long term memory, again it is there is no limit, infinite amount of information can be stored. Rate of forgetting, so rapid decay happens in case of sensory memory, it overwriting from successive inputs, if next input comes then the previous information is actually erased. In case of short term memory, it decayed or overwriting from successive attended inputs. So, in that case also it decades fast. So, as you mentioned only duration is 30 second, but in case of long term memory possibly no loss until damage in the brain or brain parts which are associated with the long term memory. So, these are the overall differences among these three types of memories. Now, following discussing various aspects of the cognitive process and human information processing, we found that sensation is important then from sensation it is going to perception, then there is cognition is happening and based on the cognition we are making various decisions and the decision is ultimately helping in selection of motor response and execution of the motor response. So, while so if you look at the schematic diagram of general model of human information processing, so you can see while that any sort of information or stimuli is coming from the environment and it is reaching to the sense organ, from the sense organ that uh, sensation is reaching for sensory processing and that is from sensory processing it is reaching to the brain for perception. So, from sensory processing or uh, sensory memory it is going for the perception and par from perception it is reaching to working memory and from working memory it is reaching to long term memory or a working memory is guided by long term memory. So, with the help of working memory cognition is happening and that cognition ultimately helping in response selection. While response is selected, then there is response execution through neuromuscular actions and that response ultimately 
providing feedback to the sensory processing. So, while this type of step by step activity is happening and there is also this type of feedback loop, then attentional resources plays a very important role. You can see attentional resources has influence on all these areas sensory processing, perception, long term memory, short term memory as well as response selection. So, attentional resources how information will be processed, it will be stored and how what type of response will be selected in all these activities actually how much attention is being provided in each of these steps it plays a crucial role. So, attention is very important in case of information processing and response execution. Now, moving to our the next topic that is related to human error and how this is important for driving. Vehicle driving is a complex task which involves human information processing under time constraint situation. Here understanding of causative factors of human error is important and thereby we can minimize the possibilities of driver errors by various design modifications. So, what is error or human error? There are various definitions of human error. So, it can be defined as an act of involving an unintentional deviation from the truth or accuracy. It can also be defined as the inconsistent any act or activities which is inconsistent with normal or programmed behavioral pattern and that differs from prescribed procedures. Reason 1991 he defined error as a generic term to encompass all those occasions in which a planned sequence of mental or physical activities fails to achieve its intended outcome when these failures cannot be attributed to the intervention of some chance agency. So, this type of planned sequence of when there is deviation from or those occasions in which planned sequence of mental and physical activities fails to achieve its intended action that is defined as the error. So, there are various definitions of human error and this human error actually happens due to various reasons. What are the reasons? So, one is task complexity there is also error like situations and behavioral characteristics. In task complexity, complex task sequence can overburden the limited capacity of short term memory and recall capability of the long term memory. As a result, due to the task complexity, different types of human error happens. Moreover, if there is error like situations incompatible with the human capabilities, limitations and experience or expectation, there is also chance of error and thereby accident. Human behavioral characteristics like demographic traits, skills, training, experience, emotional state and stress can also induce error. So, these are the main reasons for which different types of human error happen. Types of human error depending on the behavioral pattern of omission and commission. So, this is actually adapted from Swain and Gutman 1980. So, first one is the omission. Omission, what is omission? Omission is the portion of the task that is skipped. On the other hand, commission is the performing additional task or performing some task which is actually not required to be performed. Further, commission can be categorized into three extraneous act, sequential act and time error. Extraneous act means additional task or additional step which is performed which is actually not required. Sequential act due to sequential act while you are not following the proper sequence of task performance then there is also error. There is also time error the task which is performed not at the appropriate time due to that there is also error happens. According to reason 1991 psychological varieties of unsafe acts. So, reason in 1991 divided unsafe acts which is actually leading to error into main two categories unintended action and intended action. In unintended action, we can further categorize sleep lapse. Under unsafe act that intended action can further be categorized into mistake and violation. Out of all these types of errors, sleep, lapse and mistake, these three are considered as the basic error type, while violation is not considered as the error, because violation is mainly act of sabotage, exceptional violation and routine violation. So, while this type of violation it is actually intended activity 
and this is not actually an error. So, in terms of error, we can consider these three sleep, lapse, and mistake. In case of sleep, attentional failures happen where there is intrusion, omission, reversal, misunderstanding, mistiming. So, this type of different types of error occurs. Memory failures in case of lapse is mainly associated with the memory failures, omitting planned items, place losing, forgetting intentions. So, these are coming under lapse. In mistake, rule based mistakes, there is rule based mistakes as well as knowledge based mistake. In rule based mistakes, misapplication of good rule or application of bad rule. Knowledge based mistake may many verbal forms. So, it is actually that mistake is happening due to mistake in the interpretation of the information or applying the whatever the knowledge that person has, he applied in wrong way. So, mainly from this schematic diagram, we understand the basic three types of error that is the sleep, lapse and mistake. Now, if we take the example of automobile driving, in automobile driving, drivers also create different types of error due to during their information processing. So, this error may be related to detection, may be related to discrimination. So, first detection related error is called uh, detection error, failure to detect a particular target, then this type of error happens. If we take one example, the driver fails to see pedestrian, because there is no proper detection that may be due to low illumination, may be due to information overloading. So, there are may be various reasons and during the, the situation, driver may fail to detect a particular stimulus. Then discrimination error, failure to discriminate between signals. If we take one example, the stop lamp is perceived by the driver as the tail lamp. So, driver is actually failing to discriminate the two stimulus. So, in case of discrimination error, there is failure to discriminate between two signals. First one, here one example, stop lamps are perceived as the tail lamp. So, driver fails to discriminate between these two, whether that is a stop lamp or it is a tail lamp. So, he is unable to discriminate. Similarly, there may be interpretation error, failure to recognize a stimulus or a signal. A tachometer reading was interpreted as the speedometer reading. So, this type of interpretation error may happen also. There is also omission error. In omission error, failure or forgetting to perform required action. For example, forgetting to look into the side view mirror before changing the lane. There is also commission error. Commission error as we mentioned earlier, there is extraneous act, sequential error and time error. So, in commission error, performing a function that should not have been performed. For example, change radio station while turning on the windshield defrost function. So, this type of commission error may happen. In substitution error, using or substituting another item instead of the desired one. For example, in case of driving, if the driver by mistake pressed the accelerator pedal instead of pressing the brake pedal, that type of error we can categorize under substitution error. Reversal error, reversing the direction of activation or interpreting a displayed signal in opposite direction. So, this type of error happens say for example, while driver instead of increasing the temperature, he is decreasing the temperature in rotating that control knob in opposite direction. Inadequate response error, error in judgment or estimation of signal magnitude, distance, speed, etcetera. During driving, insufficient force application on brake pedal for stopping. So, if driver is unable to exert sufficient force or if unable to decide that how much force is to be applied on the brake pedal to stop the vehicle, then this type of inadequate response error happen. Then legibility error, error related to not being able to read a display. There may be different reason. So, driver may have the difficulty in clarity of visualization due to factors such as uh, small font size, insufficient light, excessive glare, etcetera. So, due to these different various factors, there may be a difficulty in legibility of the display and display elements. Recovered error, an error occurred, but operator could correct the error after some elapsed time. So, while that error happened, but driver still driver have the possibility, have the opportunity to correct that error. 
it is possible to reduce the loudness of music system while it is too high. So, by mistake if diver has increased the music loudness, he still can reverse it, it can be recovered. There is also scenario where unrecovered error occurs. This is an error that the operator fails to correct or will not or cannot correct it again. Once the driver takes the wrong turn in one way road, it is difficult for him or her to correct that action because the road is one way. So, this is coming under the category of unrecovered error. Now, after understanding various aspects of human information processing, now we have to see how that information processing is applicable in case of driving activity or how we can provide design guidelines for facilitating diverse information processing during various driving activities. So, first we are discussing about visual information that how visual information processing can be facilitated by the various type of design intervention. Off road glances of more than 4 second duration leads to drift outside the driving lane. If the driver is not looking at the road for more than 4 seconds, then obviously he will be drifted from the driving lane and it enhances the probability of accident. Thus, all in vehicle controls and displays should be designed in such a way and should be positioned in such a way that it should be visualized within a short glances of 1 second duration. Just he or she will look only for 1 second, after that again he will focus his attention on the road. Functions buried in menus or hidden features that require more number of glances to operate that should be avoided. While the divers are operating any controls or there is any infotainment system or any display where there is various menus and sub menus, most frequently used menus to be directly provided on the screen. It should not be buried under menus or sub menus, so that the time for operating those menus or tools can be reduced. Off road glances time of the driver increases with the eccentricity of positioning of the display from the straight forward line of sight of the driver. Hence, important and frequently used displays should be kept close to the driver's line of sight, mean straight forward that line of sight. Controls and display should be positioned in expected location and at the positions that require minimal head, neck and torso movement or hand or wrist movement. So, for that purpose Society of Motor Team Engineers J1138 the standard can be uh, considered. Position of controls and display should be such that they should not be obscured or obstructed by other objects or by divers own body parts. Necessary measures are needed to be taken to avoid masking effect due to veiling glare, specular glare or reflection into display surfaces or lenses due to the sunlight or any other external lights. Legibility of display should be ensured to facilitate aged drivers. Display element should be clearly visible to the drivers of all age group under varying illumination level. Ergonomic principles of display and control design are needed to be followed for this purpose to achieve best legibility. Now, design guidelines related to auditory information. Voice displays or voice activated controls should be redundant or alternate methods of use due to their possible unavailability or undesirability under certain driving scenario. So, it should be alternate one not the single one there should be other options also. Otherwise, if it is unavailable or it is undesirable in certain condition for example, speech or hearing impaired divers cannot use the voice control or display. So, for them the alternative arrangement should be there. To avoid tiny like noise of higher frequencies and to provide perception of solid need, lowering the noise frequency below 1000 hertz from interior components like a sound from the switches, latches, door closing. So, this sound should not be tiny like and the frequency of the sound should be reduced below 1000 hertz to give the feel of solidness. So, for that purpose uh, engineering design interventions are required. The higher frequency sounds are attenuated faster than the low frequency sound while travelling a distance. Thus, auditory alarm system should be uh, select uh, sound signal 
of frequencies below 1000 hertz. So, during auditory display design, while you are selecting a frequency range, it should be below 1000 hertz to ensure the detection of the alarm over further distances. For a warning signal to be heard inside the passenger compartment, its loudness should be at least 15 decibel more than the overall interior noise level. So, during designing the warning signal, this has to be taken into consideration. So, then design guidelines related to tactile and kinesthetic information. All controls should be distinct in terms of tactile perceptions to avoid discrimination error. Distinct and perceptible feedback, visual, auditory or tactile from the controls help in informing the driver about the completion of control activations. Vehicle vibrations greater than 20 hertz are generally perceived as sound or noise and frequencies below 20 hertz are perceived as the vibration. Excessive and prolonged vibration in vehicles are generally associated with higher complaints of driver discomfort and fatigue. Thus, proper suspension system with vibration damping material should be used during vehicle design. Controls and display should conform with the motion stereotype of the intended user. So, for that purpose again we can consult SA J standard. Control and display should be positioned within the comfortable or easy reach of the driver population, so that driver can easily operate various controls without more physical effort. In vehicle controls and display should be leveled properly following standard practices to avoid any confusion by the driver during their operations. So, these are the various design guidelines which helps in information processing by the drivers. Now, these are the list of references which has been consulted for preparing this presentation. So, students can go through these references for more understanding and detailed information. Further, here are the list of useful online resources which you can also explore for getting more idea about human factors and ergonomics from different websites. And here these are the various books which you can further go through for more understanding of this subject related to automotive ergonomics in vehicle design. Thank you.